Hi guys, it's Jay Kaushal, writer, motivation speaker and life coach. And today's video is going to be talking about one of the most exciting placements that everybody is overjoyed if they have it in the chart or if they see it in somebody's chart is an exalted sun. What is an exalted sun? What is the importance of an exalted sun and how do you interpret it? How do you understand it from the perspective of your life, of your life path, of your life journey, of your life purpose? How do you make sense of it? Okay. And so, yes, obviously, uh, all Aryans, all Aries people are going to have their sun exalted. So we're also going to be talking about the finer energies of how to actually make sense of an exalted sun. Is it really exalted? Is it not really exalted? Like what's happening here? And then we are going to talk about this energy from the perspective of understanding the sun and his role, his lessons according to his placements in your chart and how do you make sense of sun being in Aries in a particular house, etc. Okay. So if you're new to this channel, my name is Jay Kaushal. I'm a writer, motivation speaker and life coach. And I have coached more than 250 people, I think, more than that. Yeah, I have coached hundreds of people around the globe over the past uh, five years. So there's been a total of 2000 plus hours of uh, life coaching. And I use Vedic Astrology, Numerology, Graphology, Kinesics and a bunch of other tools in analyzing people, understanding them, helping them uncover their deepest potential, helping them uh, reconcile themselves with their heart's true calling, helping them in their self-help, self-growth, personal growth, self-development, self-improvement journey. Okay. And Vedic Astrology is where I have written tons of articles on Quora. I have over 3.4 million views over there on my articles, on my content. And that has brought me across a lot of wonderful followers, a lot of wonderful connections over the years. And uh, this video and this series of uh, videos in Vedic Astrology that I'm doing these days are all aimed at, in fact, this entire channel is aimed at providing you all of the tools that I use in my life coaching process, along with the necessary perspective that you need to develop more knowledge about yourself, to understand yourself better, to, under, to make sense of your life journey, to make sense of your life purpose better. Okay. So let's jump right into the video. So in Vedic astrology, sun is actually a form of Narayan, of Vishnu. We refer to the sun as Surya Narayan. Okay. The sun is the center of the solar system. The sun is the reason for all life, for all energy. The sun is our only source of light and energy on this planet, in the solar system. So sun has a lot of importance. In Vedic astrology, sun is associated with divinity, knowledge, learning, the Vedas, consciousness, purpose, sacrifice, nobility. All of these things are associated with sun. So, God, you know, Rama, he came from the lineage of the sun, Raghuvanshi, right? The sun has a special place in terms of the sun actually being the significator of the soul for everybody. The sun is the Sthir Atmakaraka for every individual, irrespective of whatever the Atma Karaka is in their chart. If you don't know the terminology, what is Atma Karaka, Matya Karaka? These are terminologies that we use in Gemini astrology to understand better what kind of energies a person, uh, you know, has predominantly in the area of their career, in the area of their soul, in the area, you know, soul's purpose, in the area of their uh, friendships, siblings, etc, etc. Okay. So sun is a sthir atma karaka for every individual because the sun is the universal atma karaka. The sun is the significator of the soul. The reason sun is considered to be great in the first house is because 
the first house is the self the first house is the life path okay it's life path it's how your life unfolds that can be seen through the first house that is why the planet that goes in the first house is very important so for example you know you have rahu or ketu there the north or the south node of the moon why is it considered inauspicious even though these are great placements that produce great results but why is it considered inauspicious it's considered inauspicious because with rahu and ketu there's a lot of guessing that goes into getting it right and we also have to accept that a lot of people even with all the guessing even with all the work are probably not going to get it right in this lifetime that's just what it is that's how it is with malefic planets especially rahu and ketu with sun with sun being in the first house it's a beautiful placement it's considered a great placement why because you're taking the soul's purpose you're taking the soul's consciousness and putting it on the driver's seat you're putting it in the container through which it life is going to be experienced so that is has now become the lens of all experience of the soul so life is going to be a more of a conscious experience for an individual who has sun in the first house if you have let's say south node in the first house that consciousness is going to come but it's going to come after a lot of struggle after, after a lot of letting go after a lot of you know surrender these are traits that are opposite to what we consider to be the best traits for success in the material plane okay but when you put sun here this individual automatically knows what they must do even if they may be blinded by ego sometimes that can happen early on in life but they're always very sure of what they want to do and what they don't want to do obviously if you have you know negative placements if you're going through sarasati if you have difficult aspects this can change but mostly people who have sun in the first house 90% of the time even through all the difficulties in their life well, let's say 80% of the time they are firmly in the driver's seat life is a very conscious their boundaries their life path is a, is a very conscious uh chronology of events for them okay and the reason that sun is exalted in aries the reason that sun is exalted in aries not in the 10th house where the sun is the most visible you know capricorn capricorn not in not in uh, leo not in the 5th house but in the 1st house why is that that's because when you take one's consciousness when you take one's spiritual purpose and live life through that lens that is the purest expression of life in the vedic way of life because in the vedic way of life yes we talk about a lot of materialism we talk about a lot of you know material success because there is dharma arth kaam moksha you need to do all of those things right but life is said to be best experienced by firmly being connected to your purpose which is so true isn't it it's difficult not knowing your purpose it's difficult being stuck being uh you know uh, bedazzled being unaware of what you want to do where you want to go in life it's difficult being confused so if you got to make an error you better you'd rather make an error on on the on the side of being a little bit too confident being a little bit too bright that's okay with time time will weather you out and bring you to reality and you develop a practical perspective towards life towards people but if you're starting with zero confidence if you're starting like you know you're going blind into the game of life you have no clue what your purpose is you have no clue what you want you have no clue where you're going a lot of difficult experiences can arise from such an approach So that is why sun in aries is a great placement sun in first house is a great placement but here's the catch which is what nobody talks about the sun is a noble planet the sun is the king and if you have read the ramayana although i don't think you know there's anybody anybody you know would not have read the ramayana or heard about the ramayana or would not know about the ramayana especially in the times that we're living in uh, i'm definitely sure 
everybody has. But let's say if you are unfamiliar with the story of the Ramayana, in the Ramayana, Lord Ram has to make a lot of sacrifices, as also uh, does his father, as also uh, you know do his brothers. All of them being born into the lineage of the sun. Because that is what is expected of a powerful leader. Your power is not expressed in you being a tyrant. Your power is not expressed in you commanding, demanding respect. Your power comes from your ability to let go, to make the necessary sacrifices. That is how you command respect. You never demand respect. That is why the sun is exalted in Aries, in the first house. So sun, wherever it is placed, and if you have a very strong sun in your chart, you are going to have to make a lot of sacrifices. That is going to be part of your life path. Wherever this exalted sun is placed in your birth chart, you'll be very happy. I know, oh my God, I have an exalted sun in this place. Yay! It's not really like that all the time. In fact, a lot of the time, with sun being exalted there, you're going to have to make a lot of sacrifices. You're going to have to make at least key sacrifices in that area to uphold something. Okay? In fact, Kritika Nakshatra is a nakshatra ruled by the sun and it's not an easy nakshatra to deal with. This is a nakshatra that talks about cutting away. Also, if your name starts with A, double A, you, you know, according to your name, uh, the alphabet corresponds to that of Kritika Nakshatra. You can, you know, look at it in your own life. You can analyze it. You can journal. Has it not been the case? Have you not had to make some key sacrifices in life because of your responsibilities? That is kind of what happens with this energy of the sun being exalted. Okay. So, so the sun being exalted is great because the sun being exalted will give you a lot of power, a lot of consciousness, a lot of clarity. It's like the bulb is always on in that area because it's, it's the sun, it's the light. You can see it clearly. But it's because you can see everything so clearly. Sun, after all, is the dad of Saturn. Saturn's problem is the same. He is sad, he is sick, he is frustrated. Because he can see everything clearly and he cannot change it. You know, so I talked about this in the video that I just made about Saturn and Aries. You should go and take a look. Okay, uh, watch that video if you haven't already. So in the same way, the sun, the emperor, he sees everything and he has all the power and therefore he must make the sacrifice. So it's not that easy. It's not that simple it's not that great it's not that amazing when you have uh, an exalted uh, sun in your chart it's great it's wonderful because that's where like you are deeply conscious but that's also where there's just too much to be done okay so now obviously the sun is in the sign for about a month so you know uh, it's not that everybody who has sun in aries we will say that everybody has an exalted sun you do but uh, if we were to really go into the details and see, you know, how much this effect is going to be felt in your chart, then I would say that also look at the sun in the Navamsha. If the sun is well placed in the Navamsha and you have the sun in Aries, well, yes, then we can say that, okay, yeah, your sun is uh, pretty exalted. I'd say pretty exalted. Layman's terms, we'll get into the specifics later, later videos, but yeah. And let's say that your sun is, even if your sun is debilitated in the Navamsha, let's say, and it's in a good placement, let's say it's in the first house, then we would still say that your sun is in a powerful position in the later part of your life. Okay? So now, <clears throat> if your sun is exalted in the D1 chart and it's exalted also in the D9 chart or, you know, uh, the D10 chart, then it's obviously very powerful. Okay? If your sun is exalted in the D1 chart and it's in a good enough placement, in a good enough house, let's say uh, the fifth house, either of these two, if both of them are together, it's great. It's in a good placement, sign-wise, and also in a good house, amazing, awesome. But if it's in either a good placement 
good placements for the sun would be placements or uh, you know that are naturally uh, consistent with sun's energy sun is a fiery planet fiery planet right so the first fifth and ninth houses are a great place for the sun to be sixth is also okay tenth is also fine eleventh works third also more or less but one five nine is where the sun shines truly you know these are the sign these are the houses of the fire signs in the same way in the fire signs the sun has uh, you know special power because the sun is in his element but if that isn't the case then the sun does well like any malefic planet in the sixth house in the tenth house in the third house in the eighth house the only planet that does not do well in the eighth house the only malefic planet that does not do well in the eighth house is mars because then mars is going to force you to do all of the things that you don't want to do uh, in an in an emergency situation even then mars in the eighth house can make you a great uh, what do you say um, surgeon okay so uh, yeah this is uh, i think all that i wanted to share about the sun in aries it's a great energy and i would say that if you have sun exalted then you know on a regular basis you should do the surya mantra which is om hrang hrin hrong seh suryaya namaha this is a great mantra this is a you know it, it will really help you channel the energy of the sun and get in touch with that energy surya namaskar is also something great that you should do especially if you have a great sun you should do it you know a lot of people like i already have a great sun why do i need to do it well because you already have a great sun then that means you need to work with that energy even more you know make what is good great and what is bad what is not so good bring it up to the level that's what your focus should be that's what your uh, perspective should be okay what else what else what else so uh, yeah so uh, sun is also closely related with homas so that is their vedas mantras the gayatri mantra is also closely connected with the sun and um, lord ram is also very closely connected with the sun and yes offering arg to the sun in the morning is also something that you know helps a lot with solar energy so um long story short this is all that i wanted to talk to you about sun being exalted let me know what your thoughts are on this topic you know we can start a discussion in the comments if you enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up subscribe to this channel so that you never miss a video that i post and push the bell icon so that you can be notified every single time i post thank you so much take care are you